Hi gang, Scott here. This video is the final one in this series about masking with On One Photo Raw and On One Effects. I've shown you a whole bunch about the masking tools, refining the masks, you know, why do we want to use masks, so we can target adjustments and make stronger photos. That's all great. What about using masks in presets? Presets speed up our workflow. Can we incorporate masks into presets? Uh, the short answer is, Yes, you can. There's an option for creating presets that you can include the masks in them. However, not all masks are created equal when it comes to presets. Some will translate more broadly than others, and that's what this video is about. I'm going to give you some guidelines about what types of masks make good masks to include in presets and which ones don't. So, uh, so let's get into this. Let me boil this down to a general rule. If you've created a mask that is specific to objects or elements in your photo, that is not going to be something that's good for a general purpose preset. You know, if you've intricately masked around the edge of a doorway or a person's face or their hair, and then you move to a different photo, that's just not going to make sense, right? You wouldn't put that in a preset. If you have a photo of, uh, or a series of photos of the same thing, like a still life or a landscape or something, and you've done that level of intricate masking, well, that's what sync settings is for. Select all the photos that are the same, sync them, and you're done, right? But that, that's a very specialized workflow for objects that do not move in your photo. For things that want to be like a, a style that you can apply to a variety of different photos, there are the masks that are more tonal based, or let's just say um, the, the, the graduated masks, you know, your radials and your graduated masks. Those are good candidates. How does this break down in terms of the tools that I've shown you in this uh, series? Masks that are good for presets, masking bug, luminosity masks, color range masks. Those work very, very well with presets. Things like the AI quick mask, the line mask, uh, any type of hand painted mask with the brushes, generally no. Those just don't translate well across images. Uh, the sky AI, the sky mask also doesn't translate well because yes it's talking about skies but in the current photo raw 2022 the software doesn't have the smarts to redetect skies when you go to the next photo so uh the best thing i think i can do here for you is work through an example of how do you create a preset that has masks and you can see which ones work and uh, which ones don't this scene here, I've done my development work. I've done all my, my operations on it. I'm ready to, to be done with this photo. And at least when I work with presets, uh, I tend to do the work and develop specific to the image. I want to get the image balanced and the exposure right and all that sort of stuff. And then I'll do my style in effects or in locals. And here I've just got effects, but from, from bottom up, I've added dynamic contrast. And in order to create this mask, I used mask sky and then dialed back the density. For this sunshine filter I used a color range mask. For the glow filter I used a luminosity mask and then for color adjustment I used a graduated mask, a gradient mask, one of the masking bugs. You can see it right there. So I'm ready to save this as a preset and I'll include the masks in this and then we'll apply it to another photo and you'll see which masks translate well and which ones don't. I kind of just told you which ones are going to work, but now you can see what I'm talking about and why certain masks don't work. Um, I guess maybe maybe to, to round this thing out, this will be, um, be a very silly thing for us to add, but let's say um, we had a photo filter and let's invert the mask and the masking brush, you know, we just decide to paint in, you know, a little happy face. Something that if there were an object or something up there that we would care about, uh, that you had done some hand painting on it, right? Okay, so we've got all of those things. They all have masks. Let's make a preset. So we'll go up to the settings, save settings as preset. Um, I'm not interested in develop. 
I like to do my develop separately and usually don't include that in presets. Effects, if you expand that, you can choose to include or apply the masks to the preset. And let's just call this preset with masks. Very uncreative, but for our purposes, it will be perfect. So we'll save that. Okay, now I have this preset in my library. Let me load up a different photo. We'll find that preset, apply it, and we'll see what those masks look like. I have this other photo here, and again, I've done my develop work separately. I'm ready to add style. I have nothing applied in effects, nothing applied in the locals. That just showed up because I went to the locals tab. All right, so uh, I'm ready to take that preset that we created that has all these masks in them, apply it to this photo. So let me open up the preset browser here and find my preset with masks. So we can even see in the little swatch there, a little happy face already sitting there. So we'll click on that and we'll see things show up. And there are the five filters and they all have masks. Let's walk through them one by one and see which ones made sense and which ones didn't. So we'll start at the top here, the photo filter. That one's obvious, right? If I look at the mask, this would have been if I had say, the previous landscape. There was a tree or something. I had done some some brush work. You know, that just doesn't translate well to presets because the mask is just this collection of pixels, right? It, you know, um, Photo Raw doesn't know when you do brush strokes that you're interested in, you know, this versus that. It just knows you've told me to mask in here and mask out there, uh, paint in and paint out there rather. So um, this doesn't make sense at all. Let's turn that off. The next was the color adjustment. This was a graduated filter mask with a masking bug. If I open up that tool, I have that here. So this translates pretty well to presets because I can grab this and I can adjust it for this particular photo. And this is adding some sky um, blue to the, to the sky. And I can decide where I want that to sit. So graduated filters, the radial, like the center and edges shapes, even reflected gradients. And this holds true for the adjustable gradient in the local adjustments. Those are pretty good candidates for presets with masks. You just have to remember that they're there. You know, the, the swatch that you see on the, on the right hand side is usually a clue. If you see, you know, a kind of a, a bar going across, or if you see an ellipse, that kind of shape, that's an indicator that there's probably a masking bug and you'll need to go open up that tool so that you can go and adjust it for your photo. So it's still uh, better than having to go and create it yourself, but the graduated filters, uh, filters, graduated masks, they need, a, they need a little bit more work when you're working with presets. Next one down, glow. This was a luminosity mask and let's just view it. Perfect, right? This is exactly correct for this photo. Luminosity masks in presets are very powerful because on one smart enough to know, you've asked me for a luminosity mask. Luminosity masks are based on the tones of your image. It will recompute it when applied to a different image. And if you watch the video about combining the, uh, the, the different masking tools, luminosity plus say the edges shape to get like a very cool looking spotlight with luminosity masks, that also works in presets, right? Just like we saw with color adjustment, I could go into the masking area, choose that tool and choose the position there. If I've combined that with a luminosity mask, I can do the same thing. So luminosity masks, great for presets. Very powerful for presets too. You know, before and after that glow is just being targeted to my brights. Moving on down the line, sunshine. That valley photo before it was targeting the greens with a color range mask. Let's do a view on this. This translated well. Now the softness is because of the feather. That's not a problem with the, the preset. That's the, the intentional with the, uh, the mask settings there, but it targeted the same color ranges, this kind of, you know, mossy green. Okay. These like, you know, orangey type rocks, they have some of that in there. There's some in the foreground, at least being detected. The color range mask needs a little work for this photo, but it does translate well. Once again, 
on one is smart enough to know you told me you want a color range mask and you said this is my reference color I'll look at the new photo I'm operating on find those colors and build that mask for you so color range masks luminosity masks wonderful for presets graduated filters work well too the final one dynamic contrast this was the one where I had done the mask sky and I'm not gonna do that again said I want to show you the mask what do we see my previous photo right the previous photo this is the sky in the previous photo my density is pulled down a little bit so what's why it's gray and not black sky does not translate across presets it's just not there right now the uh, the mask sky doesn't get recomputed you have to go do that yourself so um, the 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 net net is if you're building presets and you want to incorporate your masks into those presets add style that does masking bugs luminosity masks color range masks use those and save that as like a preset and then you might do your your finishing touch work with your brushes or things like uh, like doing something with the sky or so forth that gives you a more powerful preset a more versatile preset I should say a more versatile preset that you can use across a whole set of images and once again if you're working with a set of photos that are really identical maybe you do product photography and you're taking a photo of the same product over and over again but it might be outdoors and lighting's changing a little bit so there's some level of dynamic nature to it but the objects in your photo remain the same you could do that intricate masking select a bunch of photos and then just say sync and let everything go across so uh, that's the that's the end of this mini series on masking that's the story about masking and presets hope you've enjoyed it any questions always go ahead drop them below I'll do my best to answer and until next time my name is Scott Davenport have fun